This is a 1974 CB350. This is my 1970s CB350. What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. And I bought another Honda, and this is one that I haven't had in the collection and I'm very excited for. Let me tell you a little bit about this bike. So obviously it's not in the best condition as you guys can see. This bike was sitting outside for roughly 20 years. Now, paperwork issues aside, I don't know what year this bike is. When we bought it, it was at a price where the parts alone were worth as much as the bike, whether we're gonna use this bike or whether or not it's for a different project down the line. The bike wasn't turning over. The engine was seized and locked up, obviously from 20 years of sitting. It was sitting outside and then tried to pour mystery oil down the engine and try to get it to turn over, but alas, I mean, the easiest way to do it was to just take the engine apart, take the barrel off, and really inspect it that way. Once the barrel was off, you could see that Cylinder 4 had its intake valve open and it got a bunch of stuff just gunked up in there. So the bike is sitting completely in pieces right now and well, probably gonna rebuild the engine just cause it's not too expensive. It just needs a couple minor pieces, a little bit of cleaning. Overall, the engine's health look very good. So probably gonna put it back together to some extent. But the biggest thing is I don't have the exact numbers for the bike. I have a bill of sale for it, and there's a couple titling issues. Obviously, a lot of old motorcycles either are on bill of sale, don't have titles, or whatever the case is, it was lost somewhere along the extent, and this is just one of the many examples of that. Unfortunately, DMVs, especially Wisconsin DMVs, are horrible. You can't get a court order title, or I called my local court and they said, yeah, we don't do court order titles, so I'm sure there's a process that they're either not aware of, or no one's done it for some reason. The DMV will give you a bonded title, but bonded titles are pretty expensive. I have gone the bonded title route for a couple of bikes and will have to do it for a couple of bikes that I don't have the correct papers for, but it's, it's money because you got to fill bond for the paperwork. If you guys don't know what the CB350 is, essentially there's the CB4 lineup. There's the 350, the 400, the 500, the 550, and the 750. Later on, they made different variants, like a 900 and a 1000, I believe, but those aren't really the prime CB4s. When I look at the CB4 lineup, it is 350, 400, 500, 550, 500 and 550 are the same thing. 550 is just an updated version of the 500, and there's the 750, which is like the king of them all. Now, you guys have seen my 550 on the channel. I have a 1975 CB550 that is in sunrise orange. I have three CB750s. Two of you have seen on the channel. I have a sunrise orange 1973 bike, and I have a 1976 bike in Antares red. I also have a third one that's completely in pieces that is going to be the candy blue metallic. Now I was missing three of them, technically two of them, because the 550 and 500 are the same. At some point I might find a good deal for a 500 and I probably would pick it up. But the biggest things I was missing is a 350 and a 400. I love the 400, I think it's one of my favorite in the lineup. It's hard to say, hard to pick a favorite, but I think the 400 just looks awesome. It's kind of like Cafe Racer style from the factory, and I love that for it. And the 350 was kind of my dad's favorite, after the 750s probably, because it's just a smaller packaged machine of the 750. It's a direct copy almost. Like, everything was just shrunken down. It's very odd to see that motor. When I saw it, it was, you know, pistons were that big. So, it's cool to see, and it's supposed to be the smoothest of all of them. I believe one of the Honda engineers or owners or CEOs of the time was like the CB350 was his favorite of the lineup because it's just the smoothest and the best of the bunch. Those were his words. I don't know because I've never ridden one, but I've been looking for a good CB350 for a while. I had a couple get away from me and the rest of them that I see on the market are just too expensive to justify for a 350 right now. I'm not gonna put a value on them because it's hard to put a value on these old bikes, but I was looking anywhere between a couple of thousand to really 3,500, and some of the clean bikes people wanted like five grand for, and those bikes are still for sale like seven, eight, nine months later, and they're not coming down on price. I see some bikes are around the 4,000 range, which are clean, but I think they're really worth like 3,000 because they're just sitting on the market. They're not selling. And the ones that were priced reasonably around that 225 maybe even a little cheaper depending on condition, well, those bikes ended up selling. Those were the bikes I was really looking at. I'm okay with doing a little bit of restoration, taking the bikes apart, redoing them. If I could get a really clean bike for $3,000, that would be great. The biggest thing is, 
Not a single CB350 that I've had come for sale other than one has the original mufflers. And that's because while well, Honda made the original mufflers too thin, even the people who didn't modify them and change them, because a lot of people chopped and changed and made these bikes into choppers and a bunch of crazy stuff here in the States. A lot of the people who didn't do that stuff and wanted to keep the original mufflers, they just ended up rotting away after a couple of years or they would just shoot the baffles out or whatever engineering flaw because the mufflers were too thin. The mufflers for the 750s and the 350s were a little bit different. This is the bottom right muffler from the CB750 and you can see the baffles are still in place for this one and they basically that bike would either shoot the baffles out or it would start getting holes in it at some point and well you don't want that. The beauty of these is there's another muffler that sits on top and they share exhaust between the two and it sits on top of this one and then there's four total and there's two on the other side. Every cylinder has its own muffler and pipe. And I think it looks awesome like that and a lot of people would agree. So what happens with the CB350 I picked up? Not 100% sure. I think we're gonna try to get it to fire. It's currently taken apart and uh, I think we're gonna order rings for it, rebuild the top end, get the motor back into it, maybe paint it up. And at the end of the day, if I can't get paperwork to it, I won't put a ton of money into it, but something that I can most likely get stamped in a DMV plated thing. It won't be worth as much as a bike with the proper paperwork, proper titling, but it will be worth a couple thousand dollars at the very least. Because I do think these bikes are appreciating and the people want more and more money. Just right now, they're not quite there. At some point, I'm still keeping my eye out for a clean, good one at an affordable price. 1974 had a very rare color called Glory Blue Black. I believe this bike is black. It's very hard to tell because most of the time um, there's overspray on the back of the side covers that you can tell what color a bike is. The Oklahoma Sun has baked this bike's paint. It wasn't in Wisconsin, so it's not gone. That's a huge positive. The tank's in decent condition, and overall, everything is there. I'd love to hear you guys' opinions on the CB350 4 in the comment section down below. I'm really excited to either get this bike fully paperwork. If I can get paperwork for this bike, this bike will get a top to bottom full restoration and it'll be in mint condition. If I can't get paperwork for it, I mean, we're still going to make it as good as possible, but we're gonna make it as good as possible the cheap way because some point down the line, I will figure out a way to have a DMV certified tag that is adapted for it to get it onto the road. There's ways to do it, but my state, I don't think will allow it. So we'll figure out how we can do that. If I can't find out what color it was originally, if I can't get paperwork for it originally, we'll just paint it something fun. We'll put a four into two exhaust system into it. We'll repaint it a fun color that's a little bit different that you can clearly tell it's been modified because not everything needs to go back to factory specifications, especially if it's already been mangled or you don't have the correct papers and the VIN tags missing, which is a huge thing. They have a stamped VIN on the side of the bike, so I still have a VIN number for it, but the plate is missing and there's not a real way to get another plate. So that's the unfortunate part. Anyways, that's all I have. Stay tuned for more Honda content to come for sure. I am wanting to diversify a little bit from the Hondas because uh, it's been a lot of Honda stuff for uh, a little bit, especially this channel. I've done a ton of Honda stuff on this channel. There's some non-Honda stuff coming soon. Old British stuff, other old Japanese stuff, maybe some new stuff coming as well. Just thought I'd inform you guys on my newest purchase as of two months ago one to two months ago. Recent, semi-recent. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to click on some other videos. Go check out some of my other Hondas in my collection or non-Hondas.